Right, we had guys changing the scores of practice sets and reporting at the coaches. Like, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> like, crazy stuff. Like, we'd be at dinner and be like, dude, like, why did, why did Kevin just say that I lost six three? <laughs> I won six two. <laughs> like, Welcome back to the Changeover Podcast. We're coming to you live from a hotel lobby. So if you hear motorcycles or buses outside, we apologize. My name is Justin Roberts. I'm the clown who said last week that he never had any stomach issues on the road. And I've had uh, food poison the last three days, so it's feeling kind of rough today. The co-host to my left is six foot four, six foot four and a half. But you let him tell it, he'll tell you he's six five. He's lying. It's my, my partner, good friend, Jody McGinley. And we are the Change World Podcast. We are on the road to 2,000 subscribers now on YouTube. Uh, we love bringing you guys kind of content, but to be honest, we're a little bit behind with the editing costs. So any way you can help, we would appreciate. We're actually going to put like a little Venmo link in the, we call it the description? In the description below, yeah. And if you want to pitch in and help out, we try to give you guys some sort of value with like the shirts and the hoodies and stuff. But if you want to spend that much money and you also want to pitch in, that, that link will be there and available for you. We appreciate you. And tonight we have two guests. I would say interesting, interesting guys, Texas A&M alums. The first guy, I would say, dresses in a way that's pretty incongruous with his environment. What's a word? He, uh, <laughs> you, might, <laughs> you might see his toes out in the cold. You might see him with a wristband on at lunch after a match. He's not taking it off. You might even see him in an airport with clay court shoes tied, size 14, as if he's about to play a match right that second. His name is Noah Shakhtar, and his teammate and doubles partner this week is the kind of man to leave from a tournament that is, I think, on hard court and sea level and show up to another event halfway across the world that is at 8,000 feet and is on clay. His name is Pran Pranav Kumar, <laughs> and we're going to call him PK tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight, guys. Uh, it's looking forward to having this conversation. We had some fun talks at dinner the past the past few nights. For sure. You guys happy to be here? Or, yeah, or, uh, thanks for grateful, having us. Grateful yeah. to be here. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it wasn't too bad of an introduction. Oh, no, it was good. Well executed introduction. No, thanks for coming, fellas. Uh, yeah, we had dinner. For those of you who don't know, obviously you don't know the, the guests, but we, um, we had dinner a few nights this week and we spent a lot of time with these guys at tournaments whenever we're at the same tournaments and it's been a long time coming to getting you guys on so thanks for coming on thanks, thanks for joining for us thanks for having us man. now the elephant in the room is that these guys PK and Noah played against Jody and his partner Ben Locke today and I'd like to know your guys thoughts on that match today uh, first of all who won I did not win yeah, uh, <laughs> tennis we, tennis ones. Uh, you want to start? Yeah, sure. We 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 won a tough. It was. I thought honestly, I I texted Jody this too. I thought it was very very high level. Um, obviously altitude, it's tough to tough to return. Jody and Ben were serving huge. I mean, Jody especially was serving. We uh, we were looking at the second set. I think we we won four points on you guys in the second set of returns. Yeah. It was something ridiculous. You guys were serving huge and playing really well. Um, just a couple points in the 10 point breaker that were kind of rivers a little bit, I guess, <laughs> as we like mm -hmm. to call them a little luck here and there, but no, I thought it was a great match. Jody, I thought played very well and Ben did too. So thanks brother. Would you guys call it the, the great eight? Like you, got, like people who don't know when yeah. you play at 25 K and doubles, when you win your first round, you go to the quarterfinals, you get three points. If you win your second round, you get your quarterfinals, you go to the semis, you get eight Finalists get 16 and winners get 25. But what's the terminology for these? Uh... We're calling it the Mighty Eight. <laughs> the Mighty Eight. The mighty what's eight. the three? Nightmare, Nightmare. Three. Nightmare <laughs> three. Mighty Eight and 16. Or there's nothing else after that. So uh, we we changed it like actually this week because we were thinking like, God, like we can't just keep calling it Mighty. Do we get too nervous in the course? Okay. So, we, <laughs> so we're just going Solid Eight now. Like solid. So you didn't have to get help nervous. This week. Yeah, you didn't have walk to get over. nervous in the quarters. You got to yeah, walk yeah, over. Yeah, well, this was before the quarters. We were talking about it. And then <laughs> so we're saying that it's really mighty to get 16 and then mega mighty to get 25. Mega <laughs> mighty. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I, no, like it. I, I agree on the match, though. I thought it was a high-level match. I mean, I told Ben because I think Ben felt like he 
took some blame for the loss in some moments but then i also felt like i took blame for the loss in some moments like we lost our serve at five all in the first um ben serve and i think that moment he wasn't very happy with himself but then in the tie break i think i only made a return at nine seven that's the first return i made in the whole in the, in the 10 point tie break um i was serving really well and i was playing decent like at the net but i like you said returning out to you is tricky and i think what bothered me in the third set tiebreak is that I saw a few second serves. I mean, granted, they were decent second serves, but still, it's not like uh, I was playing untouchable balls and stuff. You know, I had some second serve looks, so that that bothered me. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. But um, <laughs> but yeah, and also maybe like one or two like volley points. Like, I think the four one point killed me. Like, I poached. I had it on top of the net. Noah's off the court and I hit the ball like down but right to PK. You can smile at PK. It's okay. You can, <laughs> feel, you can, you can feel good about it though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't, I'm not that beat up about it. Like, I, I thought it was a good level match. Yeah. So, I yeah. feel like you guys like only served my back into like yeah. after the first set. Yeah. Cause you like took some after swings at the that five three or, two, or four three. Or Bluff? Yeah. <laughs> Bluff ones or they, sh- they should have stayed away from No, me. I mean, it worked. Like, we, like they were winning almost every point, like because mm. they're serving so big there, it's tough to like catch the ball early. Mm. When there's and the bounces are tough, to yeah. Like any bounce, I think also you guys didn't return that many line. So like Ben and I was saying that the net person needs to pinch hard, but like sometimes that's so hard to do, like to close the middle that hard because you feel like you're leaving the whole line open. And there were a few balls that passed, especially on the ad side from you, Norway. I was like. I tell myself, stop being a bitch. Like, just take the middle, you know? Like, if, thought, PK, yeah. if PK was on that side, he's taking the middle all day, just going, Doop. I thought you could have crossed, like, called more pokes yeah, on second serve. Exactly. We, we talked about we that, so we just yeah. didn't, we didn't do that enough. But from the outside, I feel like it was a pretty high level as well. And I think doubles in general is a pretty small margin game. But I feel like it's even smaller in these conditions. It's, like, hard to keep the ball down. I feel like the chances to break are few and far between. So I think you guys both play well and it's kind of... Just kind of went your guys' way today. At the end, it looked like it started to get a little tight, no? Like, you were up 9-4. Well, 9-4, four. Nine, nine, four, like, that was a ridiculous point. And then like, you, you guys were both laughing, like, yeah, good point. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's 9-7 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, were, we, were, we were laughing because, like, this happened so much. Like, we always kind of, like, speak it into existence. Mm-hmm. Or, like, when we saw 9-4, he hit, like, kind of both lines. We looked at each other like, oh, no. Here we, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the funniest thing happened today. But in singles and doubles, when I watch Noah play, I think it's upset. I think it's the funniest thing, right? I can't do Where you did the side shuffle and he lost oh, it. Oh, yeah. He lost it. But it's also just the words you use. It's like, in the singles, you were like, you were very upset. But the way you do it is, oh, my God, dude. And then today in the doubles, they they had a call that you thought they shouldn't have. The referee called the ball or didn't call the ball. Yeah. You circled it and they didn't let you guys play the second serve or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I see you walking back. I don't know the exact words, but all I see is, I'm going to fucking lose it, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what it's said. It's like, I swear to God, bro, I'm going to fucking lose it. Like, no. <laughs> you don't sound angry enough for me, bro. That's, that, that's too funny to me. <laughs> Swear to God, I'm gonna lose it. Yeah. <laughs> he always tells me, like, I don't know when, dude. I don't know when, but I'm gonna, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> Wait, dog. Just that's break funny. a racket or something, bro. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> The thing is, with that call, I thought I thought that it was out, but I thought that you guys looked at the mark after the point was over. Like, it didn't look like, especially PK, it didn't look like you looked at the mark until you hit the return, Ben volleyed it away, and then he started to walk up. I just thought know? it was too fast, so I was just yeah. like, we were just like... Just like, trying to just, react, yeah. 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 But it's also hard, because also these clay courts are weird, because sometimes they don't make marks. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but like sometimes, yeah. they, so like... You're kind of like been playing the the last point, years, and well. you have to like... Oh, <laughs> you haven't played many matches. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But... Yeah, but um, all right, let's, let's get into some. Uh, all right, I got you with the topics. Overrated, underrated, and some ranking stuff. Mm-hmm. First thing, this has nothing to do with tennis. I want you to rank Starburst, Skittles, and the Fruity Mentos. That's him, dude. He knows. Uh, Starburst number one. I agree. Which yeah. flavor? Uh, the pink one I like. Okay, you have to say pink. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pink and yellow, I feel like. And then the, uh, Skittles, was it you say? Yes. Yeah, Skittles, number two. Mentos has to come last. Yeah, Mentos, Mentos is, is last. definitely last. You don't eat any candy or what? No, I do, but like Mentos in India is a big deal, man. 
Really? <laughs> so <laughs> that's a big one. deal. Like the pink Mentos, like I got that. That's like, the best one for sure. But those are like rare, dude. Like those are big deal in India. So, like, <laughs> so in India, Mentos is one. In Mentos is one. Okay. I don't think there's even Starbucks in India or Skittles. It's like only Mentos. Mentos. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, Texas boys. Let me hear cane sauce, Polynesian sauce, or Chick Fil A sauce with some tenders to dip. Um, you gotta ask him. I'm vegetarian, so. You yeah. know me. This man's not gonna answer no questions. <laughs> Chick fil A sauce. Chick fil A is one. Yes. You lost your mind. Okay. And then uh, probably Polynesian sauce, then canes. Uh, I think Polynesian comes last for me. Polynesian is one, canes two, Chick fil A three. Wow, three different answers there. Wow. Are you, you gonna ask anything be. tonight, or is it gonna be? No. <laughs> you never been a Chick Fil A. Like, never, like, like, just like doubles. Like you don't get like just. Have you, ever just ate, have you ate the fries with the Chick Fil A sauce? Yeah, class. No, absolutely. What class. do you do when people go to get fast food restaurants? You just sit out. Yeah, I just sit down, man. You don't get fries. Nothing. I mean, dude, like there are so many times where, like, for example, oh, we, we, the, the story about we went with the Five Guys. The whole team took us to Five Guys, and he was like, "Steve, I can't eat here." <laughs> <laughs> But there'd be times where, like, he Steve would love Outback. He uh-huh. loves, like, beyond, any, like, he's like, oh, I can't wait to get my ribeye. And he'd be like, oh, oh, oh PK, can't wait for you to get mac and cheese and broccoli again. No. Yeah. Don't you. Cool. Like that. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, I wonder what PK's eating tonight, guys. She's solid. <laughs> Like, right. They got good bread, man. It's like, jeez, man. Bread is good at work. The, the, the black bread, like the dark brown bread. I've like, eaten yeah. way too many of those, dude. Way, <laughs> many, way He's too a veteran. Vet. But in India, it's. I thought it was just like no cows. You no, said you shouldn't eat cows. It's more like your family. Cow. Okay. So, like, my family was. Like, my whole extended family is vegetarian. Like, mm. no, no one in my family. But, like, there. Have you ever eaten any meat? Like, on accident. Yeah. Okay. Have, How do you accidentally eat? Oh, you vomited it up? Oh, yeah. How do you accidentally eat meat? Like if you go to like I've been to I've been to like Starbucks and I got something and they mix it up or just stuff like that. Um, yeah, I never. I don't even. I don't. I mean, I've just never had it. So, so what really have you been like, eating like, here? A lot of pasta, which I'm getting sick of a little bit. And yeah. then uh, careful, I use those words getting sick because some of us actually get sick. That's you know? true. Speaking we were, of, we were at Tanta and, <laughs> and no, every day is like, man, don't be eating no vegetables out here. Like, no, that's all I eat, man. Like, we <laughs> <laughs> you want me to just eat pasta and, like, nothing else? And, he, and he, we were at Tanta, and he, we ordered, like, I don't know, some hummus plate. And he and he goes, don't be looking at them tomatoes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's too risky. Yeah, too risky. So when you get the Loma Noa, you don't eat the tomatoes? No, because I do, because it's, like, it's cooked. It's cooked, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think, yeah, I've been eating whatever I want. I need to be careful. Like tonight, I'm tight now about ceviche and stuff. I don't know if ceviche is what. You think it was from that restaurant? I got no clue. I I assume so because I was fine all day, every day before that. But we ate there before at the exact same meal. Yeah. Yeah. What's crazy about that is that you and I had the same ceviche, and then you and him had the same like the other meal, the lomo saltado. So like, and we all had hot chocolate. And we all had hot chocolate. Could have been your lunch. Chicken and rice. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> There's no vegetables in there. So yeah. okay, man. Yeah, I was pretty pretty diligent there. There was no issues there. But I will say though, the food I still love the food in Peru. I just it's I, been I, great, I, man. I got a yes. bad a bad a little batch there. But I had ceviche for like five nights in a row. Like, I would have probably had it every single night if Justin didn't get sick. I'll just be going going in. So oh, speaking yeah. of that, overrated or underrated? You think toilet paper installs? I think that's. <laughs> It's, what? Well, I guess what kind of question is that? It's definitely underrated then because yeah, but but here, but here at the club, the, no, well, no. there's no tissue you in the pre- store. Wait, you, you have know, to prepare. You have to... <laughs> but like I'm talking about, like if you have to go, right? yeah, you're not thinking. Let me check to see if there's gonna be tissue in the store. No, you just go to sit down and wait, get. Did you t- did you make this mistake? No, no, no. I was lucky oh. enough to have my issues here in the hotel. <laughs> they they began here, <laughs> but, but also like the worst nightmare is like not bringing enough toilet paper. Like you wow, prepared. imagine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you prepared but not well enough. Yeah. <laughs> then you have to walk back out. <laughs> it's a nightmare, brother. Oh, I'm telling man. you. I'm telling you. But on a more serious note, overrated or underrated companionship on the road. Underrated for sure. Underrated. Agreed. I used to think. I remember a couple of guys that like 
that have played before and like we're playing have told me that like you know you need to be like focused and like kind of like keep time to yourself but i realized like it only makes you at least for me it only made me like tighter and made me more like fidgety so like i've, I've actually been trying to be a little more social like the last couple of months and just like I was telling him this the other day too. I feel like I have way more friends on the road now than at home. Like I actually look forward to the tournaments and seeing like you guys, seeing you know everybody at the tournament. Um, just because I think it's and the refs and even like the supervisors. All right, cheers, 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 I know, cheers, cheers. I know. Cheers. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's getting a side now. He's getting a little side. Don't go through the refs. <laughs> but like it's nice. Dude. I don't know. I think it's 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 cool. Like it's one thing she told me to do actually. What? To be more social. He loves to talk. Oh, oh yeah. I thought he said that guy loves a good conversation. Yeah. No, no, not the mess around with the refs but like just to like see everybody especially in the mm-hmm. states you get to you see all the the same refs josh too. josh tips the scale too far the other way sometimes i'm waiting for josh like when are you gonna finish this conversation like no i know man don't worry, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. shout out josh, yeah, shout uh, out josh but those those like talks at the at the restaurant that last let's say two three hours is like you get to pass that time without like thinking about the matches and being all in your head i think it i think it's definitely helpful but I think that that changes at different levels, no? Like, if you go to challenges, it seems a little bit more segregated. Bro, I was so lonely last week. So lonely. Like, I mean, like, at challenges, it's nice to have your own hotel room. And obviously, like, I saw Noah almost every day. I saw, like, other people like Carew and, like, Harry and Cannon and these guys that I would, like, have lunch with, have dinner with and that sort of stuff. But, like, in between, I was just lonely, bro. Like, I was just in the room, like, trying to do some podcast work. But, like, the time was going by so slow, like, every day. I guess I also spent, like, five days preparing that I lost first round, and I couldn't leave for another, like, three days. Right. So it's, like, I spent over a week there. I played an hour and a half. Not even an hour and a half. Maybe an hour and ten minutes of match. And then the rest of the week was just boring. Like, right. So boring. So, like, I was looking forward to this week. Like, having you guys, having Amy and Dan, like, people, like, familiar faces around, you know? And also the podcast helps, too, like, pass the time. And, like, like, like what he said, takes your mind away from the matches for a little bit. Like, when we went to dinner the other night, we were just talking for, like, two hours, and you're not thinking about tennis. Like, yeah, that's, that's fun. That's you fun. You laugh a lot. It's like, everyone's it's de-stress, crying, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. My face was hurting from how much we laughed the other night. <laughs> Some of those a and stories, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we can't share those yeah. here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and you, how did you feel at the challenge uh, versus this week? No, I definitely think, like, when you, when you travel with friends, it helps you, like, put you in a better mindset and, you just don't feel as like uptight. I mean, mm. for me, I feel like way more at home. Like it's like more comfortable that like even you're not at home, but the, it makes you feel like you've been in that setting before. If you, mm. you know, go home, like you're in the room with the same guy you see every day. It makes you feel better. You guys can joke around, laugh, take your mind off like a stressful environment. Helps you play better for sure. I'm with you, but like I spent maybe like two days with you last week after you lost your singles match, you're pretty down. And then today you lost in three sets, tough match. And I knew you were a little bit down. So it's nice of you to have PK. Like, like psychologist here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine, imagine if you had. Especially you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to figure like, this out. We're going to figure this out. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, no, because, <laughs> because last week. <laughs> because, to God, dog. <laughs> no, because last week I had to talk to him. Like after his match, he was down. And then we practiced that same day. Like we set up to practice. So we practiced that same day. And from the beginning of practice, he was down. You know, so I had to like try and help him talk to him. And then probably the same thing today. Like you had. PK there. Like, imagine if you had a double partner that you were not that familiar with, that, that you know? Like, oh, you, yeah. you would have had lunch by yourself. Yeah. You would have been... You it know. helped a lot, too, just to, like, get over it faster and, yeah. like, reset. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the things I told Ben. I was like, like, at the beginning of the match today, I said, Noah lost a tough one today, so I don't know how hard he's taking it, but, but maybe, like, we just have to see how the beginning of the match goes because he could be affected by it or he could be not, you know? So, um, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I much prefer to have people like friends on the road like helps pass the time and stuff so how have you, how's it been you guys traveling together because i know you guys have been traveling together for a while it hasn't been that much to be <laughs> honest with you the last three years right i've been hurt a lot but i've always enjoyed it yeah i think we live together and so it's, it's something that's very familiar and He's probably my closest friend, so with someone, it's good to have him there when I'm playing a match. I can look off. I feel, how do I say this in a way that's not going to affect my 
My, uh... <laughs> just be you, man. My just ego. Be, yeah, just uh, be yourself. Just be yourself, man. It's okay. There's like a, some sort of support system there. You don't feel like you're alone right. when you're out there. And that's helpful. And probably the biggest thing is the, the hours off the court that we're always laughing and listening to music or talking about mutual friends and catching up on stories and stuff. It just makes makes life easier. Yeah, for sure. You know, and if in life, if something ever goes wrong, he's the person that I would talk to first probably. So yeah. to have him there, it makes my life easier. But yeah. hopefully we get more of that. In yeah, the, of course. In the coming the coming years, but yeah. But oh, speaking you. speaking to yeah, same. Sick. But speaking to uh, <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. didn't sound too neutral. Man. But speaking yeah, to great. um, I guess Noah a little bit. But you played a few challenges as well. So have you guys noticed a difference? I guess primarily in the doubles, like the difference between futures and challenges. Can you tell a difference between one the level and two like the like the quality and then two like the effort of. Okay. Uh, he has a great theory on this. So. I, mean, I, I have actually, a good theory I too. I think like the level of fight of futures doubles is way higher. Like the everyone is like competing, you know, like for their life. Uh, like I feel like it's harder to to actually like win an easy match. Yeah. And then challengers, I think the level can be higher, but a lot of guys will just kind of like go through the motions, or they want to save energy, or they want to go home. And you see a lot of like. You know, semi tanking, semi tanking, kind of, and challengers, but the level probably is higher. Just and so many walkovers, by the way. Yeah, so many walkovers. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's easier to maintain your ranking in challengers because the points are higher and there's so so much tanking. But the future is like obviously sometimes you play guys who don't know how to play doubles, but everyone competes like yeah. So it's hard to hard to win ma- like easy matches. I think also what's tricky about the challenges is. Even the guys who are like kind of going through the motions, because their quality of play generally is higher, they normally serve pretty well and return pretty well. So, regardless, it's tricky. And then also, if you if you know that you're playing someone that they don't necessarily care, then that's also a little bit tricky, you know. Yeah. But I agree. Like they they care less. Maybe not all of them, but there are lots of players that care less in the challenges where in the futures guys are just fighting, fighting for their lives. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. That goes with the next over underrated, which would be taking no points off in a match. Like being being the guy or playing against the guy who seems to play every point at the same intensity. Is that over underrated as a mental habit? Underrated skill. Um, uh... If you if you're playing against someone that you like never gives up and is like even if you're up forty love in a game is like gonna fight for their life like it sends a message and you know it makes you like a little tighter you have to focus more just because the match their focus even if they're not quote unquote good it's hard yeah. to, like you said to put them away but yeah. easy yeah I agree with that I think that we people spend a lot more time thinking about like. How good am I playing versus how hard am I competing? And I think that just being a good competitor is like, I don't know what percent of the battle that it is, but it definitely is going to make the other guy's life much more difficult. And I think that that's, I guess what you call that, just like invaluable when it comes to the, like a tennis match and tournament. Uh, I think that's also paired with the, the reactions when a player misses or makes a shot, like with not going away. You know, like them them being calm too is scary, you know? Like in today I was thinking, especially like in the tie breaks, I was trying to portray like confidence and like trying to be big, you know? Cause like I don't know, like in the first set tie breaks, you guys hit a couple of doubles. So I didn't know if if I portray that kind of confidence in the third, maybe we get one or two more errors again, you know, and I think that also plays a part in it, like not it's only by PK just put in the way, but at least like a madman. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys think is more intimidating? Like someone who shows no emotion or someone who like kind of like is screaming, come on, and like lets think, you know that they're... But also can show you the negative a little bit. Yeah. I think it depends. Like I think you have to read the opponent. So like let's say I'm playing an opponent that is already down on themselves, then maybe I don't get involved. Maybe I just, you know, I celebrate to myself like you, the, let them be you know yourself. and I let them yeah I let them do it but then if they're rolling or whatever and 
or they're fiery or whatever. Maybe now I want to get under their skin, you know, to change their level of play or their mindset. So I think I think of it that way. I, I think of it more like how can I impact or not impact my opponent rather than myself. I feel like the the noise is actually irrelevant. There's like a aura or an energy that people put off that you can kind of read. It's like you can tell someone's confident or you can tell someone that maybe they're loud because they're nervous and they like to be like blowing off steam. But I think like for me, if I can tell that you're not a confident person and you're just making a lot of noise, then I, I don't know a better word, but it's like you're being a clown, kind of. Like you're the just bluff. kind of, you, yeah, you're yeah. trying to like trick me into thinking that you're, I don't know, Nadal or whatever. <laughs> but I can I can feel that you're not confident. But there are people who kind of exude a confidence. I don't know, maybe you can also get maybe fake this. But I think that the aura that someone gives off is more important than, let's say, the noise level. So like if you're playing with Novak on the day and he's quiet, you would probably feel a similar amount of pressure as if you play in the dial and he's loud. It's like there's like a certain energy they give off that you know that they're that they're there and that they're confident. I think is more the thing. I think you can also tell by the way people play, and not necessarily by the shots they hit, but the way they like the way like they kind of stick to their game. Mm. Because I think if if you like you said, if you have a guy that screams, but he's just bunting every ball in the service box, and like obviously you know like he's not the most confident. A guy who makes big, but he bails on a run. Right. It's just, yeah. yeah. Or like he's quiet, but then like anytime on the run, he's going for something ridiculous. Yeah. I think, or or it's the other way around where it's like he's gonna make you play every ball, or he's he's sticking to his guns like first serve, first ball. Like he's gonna like Adam going Neff after just it, yeah. like, crushing the ball. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Or yeah. even the way they hit the ball. Like, even if someone is at the ball, you can tell when someone has a confident stroke. Pause. It's like firm coming off the racket. And stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you can, yeah, you can tell. Like, if, someone is, if someone's backing away, if someone... I paused it, didn't I? You did, you did, so you did. So what's that about? You're right. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, if someone is, like, backing off the ball, if, yeah... If they're pulling away, like you can, you can tell from also yeah. how they are when they're at the ball. Like, they send so many things from. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and the last one I have for you, over underrated, how a shot feels. Is the way a shot feels over or underrated? And I, I, I guess I preface it by saying we used to work with Taylor Dent much more closely to go to his academy, and he was all about what is the ball doing. Like he said, I don't care. What it feels like with this take back or on the contact, I don't care what you feel. If the ball is behaving the right way, then just get used to doing that. If it's behaving the wrong way and it feels good, then it's also worthless. So, like, what are your thoughts on feel? And do you think that it's over underrated? Because a lot of players talk about they need to be able to feel, let's say, their back and or their forehand in order, to, in order to play well. How do you view? I mean, I agree with that, but I think it's hard to get to that. Well, I think everyone wants to feel the ball good, mm-hmm. but I, I would guess I would agree and say it's overrated. If you can find a way to not think about how the shot feels and just the result of the shot, then, you know. How do shots feel to you? Because, the like, I was looking at your serve grip today. Yeah. And it's like you have the pinky and the, I guess, the fourth yeah. finger. Yeah. Then you have a little bit of a gap. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a tiny little gap here. Yeah. On the phone and two. I have a double trigger. I don't know why I'm thinking about this. Hey, hey, hey. Being like, oh, dang. Hey, Jody's got two, tell guns, two guns in one hand. <laughs> can, I tell you, can I tell you what's overrated? Is changing technique before you play. That is oh, extremely really? overrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? Why, why, why would you say that? Why would you oh, say that? Why would I say that? Yeah. I had an experience recently where... Uh, okay. I had an experience recently where I was about to play a match and a coach lent some advice to me on my serve before I played and that affected me negatively while I played the match. And as you can tell today, there's nothing wrong with my serve. So, um... Pretty fair say, I would say. Fox. Yeah. Yeah, Back. so I would say that you should probably not like mess with technique before you play. So we can, we can joke about Noah's grip, but it's effective, you know, and mm. yeah. But I was I would say in this discussion, like I would lean more towards the quality of the ball than, than how it feels, especially in doubles. Like 
I don't really give a shit. Like, just get the job done. Like, get if if I'm at a net and I have to move and make some crazy reaction volley, I don't care how it feels as long as I'm putting away the ball, yeah. you know, or like. It's such small margins that I, I don't really care how it feels. Just get it's the job It's also like done. an emotional thing, though, because if it doesn't necessarily feel right in a big moment, it's going to be hard for you to, like, trust that thing. Right. So I feel like we kind of, we groove things. I don't know whether that's muscle I definitely think or, it's a scale. Yeah. It's a scale. I would lean more towards, like, ball quality and effectiveness than, like, feel. Because you could eventually groove that pattern to where that becomes the thing that feels normal. Yeah, there are people who have bad strokes, but that stroke feels normal to them, and it's it's a it's technically poor, you know. Mm -hmm. So definitely, it depends on the quality of the ball, I would say. But like what you just said, like it feel is is like marginally there too. I think early yeah. prep is also like early prep mm -hmm. is big. It's, big. It's, very big. It's, big. it's a big thing. Did you ever seen Noah play tennis, bro? The guy's four hundred. Like this, bro. Like. <laughs> but yeah. still catch it late. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me when he was playing his own, he's like, I, dude, I prepped so early, but I still catch it late, dude. I don't get it. Like, I don't understand. Get a release earlier, too. That's when he was about to lose it. He's like, I'm going to lose it. Cause I, I swear to God. I swear to God. Hasn't lost it yet for months. <laughs> <laughs> Did him throw a rock and hit a ball on the court. But speaking of early prep, um, is that one of the things you guys adjusted when coming to altitude, like with the ball flying and that sort of stuff? Or what kind of adjustments have you guys made in your game to try and be effective? Um, I've honestly tried to aim like service box a lot. Just try to like accelerate to the service box, and it, I feel like it the ball travels deeper than what I aim. Okay. Um, also, what about height? my racket tighter. No, I try to keep it lower over the net. Uh, so you just aim low and aim to land aim. the ball on the service box. Yeah, yeah. So I, trajectory is big. Yeah, I feel like if you lift up at all, like it flies. It flies like a lot of like. I would say a lot of guys who like hit with a lot of spin like it and it's tough to like find that. I feel like guys who are good in altitude hit flat usually. Yeah. Cuz they have low tra trajectory over the net and it doesn't fly as much. How much tighter did you go? Sorry. Um, I went okay. really tight cuz I'm like I hate sailing. I hate okay. missing long. I went like 6 Sail. pounds tighter. We, yeah. We go like okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, no, I I similar very we do. We did talk about. Early he showed prep. up. He showed up Monday night for a tournament that starts on Tuesday. But I was lucky did, to get a Wednesday start. Yeah. Thank. Thank you to Super. See, that's why you gotta be nice to Super. Right? <laughs> What's crazy is Ben did not get a late start in Dubs, even though he requested, and he had a tournament that he was coming from. Like he had matches. I think he played on Saturday, and they didn't give him a late start. But then. PK comes in and PK gets the late start, you know? That's why you got to talk to these supervisors. You got to be nice. <laughs> um, no, I, we talked about early prep a lot. Um, I've been focusing on my foreign on leading into it more because sometimes I pull off. It's kind of one of my bad habits I have. And especially in altitude, if you pull off, like you said, it's just, it's going to the moon. Um, like so, Dogecoin? Yeah. Huh? Hmm? Dogecoin. No <laughs> <laughs> he said, what is it going to the moon? <laughs> um. Yeah, so I was just focusing on that and then just really in singles I was trying to serve in volley but probably didn't have the best prep. Um and how different is defense and let's say sea level and in altitude? Oh how it's way harder to play defense in altitude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cuz your natural instinct when you play defense is to hit up and give yourself time like to height, recover. Yeah. But here you you really can't do that unless you have like insane feel. So you actually have to hit kind of linear on the run which is not what most people are used to mm -hmm. yeah so i was telling justin on the first day he came in we we're hitting and i was like i'm not i'm a little bit insecure about when i give people advice so i wasn't sure about it but i was like i think that is opposite it's like like what you just said you know if you're defending normally people want to play high and deep and maybe close the court so there's no angle for the person to like make you run again so that was Justin's instinct, like normal. And I told him, man, I think it's actually opposite. Like if you're on the run here, you almost want to just go through the court. And then when you have time to set up, then you can try and go for like, like spin and dip the ball or like make a jump or whatever. But <clears throat> if you're defending, you either slice or you try and go through, just hit a good quality ball somewhere and just hope that the clay takes it or it's just a tough, tough ball for the opponent to move it other way, you know? And the serve is like... <clears throat> everything it feels like in these conditions yeah the serve is super important yeah because it's 
so hard to catch the ball early. Also, playing defense, too. Like, if you serve a good wide serve to recover, uh, it's, like, almost impossible if someone executes a pretty good, like, one, two. Especially on clay. Yeah. 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 So it's pretty slippery. It's yeah. kind of slippery, too. It's hard, to, it's hard to go behind you, too. I see yeah. a lot of guys get burned with that. Yeah. Like you can't even, like, stop yeah. to go back. Yo, do you have hardcore shoes? Clay. The clay core shoes? Yeah. Ah, okay, okay. Yonex, no, no. Not Diodora. Yeah. Switching it Made up. the switch. To, uh, <laughs> someone, uh, like a coach, that uh, Patrick Dacey, I don't know if you guys know him. But yeah, I know Patrick. He told me about these, like, Yonex clay shoes, and I feel like they're the best ones I've really? tried for clay. Yeah. You've tried, like, Asics, Adidas, yeah. Nike, everything? Yeah. Really? What's the difference, you feel like? Just a little bit like a better free, grip. A little bit better grip yeah. on the clay. But here, it's actually very slippery, but... I feel like on green clay, it's, it was like really effective. Yeah. Um, can we talk a little bit about scheduling and like, like travel and that sort of stuff? Um, <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? You know, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming there eventually. But um, <laughs> let's talk about first of all, how do you select your schedule and which tournaments to play? Uh, I guess we can start with Noah. Like, what factors into your decision making process? Is it conditions? Is it cost? Is it uh, like opportunity of the draw? Like, what, what do think, you think? About? Uh, well, I like to play tournaments where I'm, where I'm in both singles and doubles. So, like, that's the main priority that I get, get to play both, even if it's qualities for singles. Yeah. Um, and then I try to play tournaments that I feel like I'm a contender, you know, that I can feel like suits my game style. Uh, I feel like that's the best way to to go about it uh i mean a lot of guys who like are making like top 100 or just, like that are just strictly clay quarters or guys that or serve big and they only play in like fast hard courts or grass i feel like you have to know your game style and try to make a schedule based off that so you feel that altitude clay is where you i i prefer altitude clay more than regular clay sea level clay for sure i think it helps my serve uh and like I feel like I, I hit like flatter than most guys. I would say so. I feel like it's not like as big of an adjustment. Okay. Yeah. And can I just ask you what was the thought process behind wearing the size fourteen Diodorus in the airport <laughs> and in Boliv- going to Bolivia that night? I'm grinding. Were you, were, were you trying to like break in the shoes? Like I didn't understand why they were okay, tied so, either. No. <laughs> so, and why you were wearing shorts? <laughs> no, you, gotta cha- you gotta tell a champagne story. Too. Which one? Well, because now you stopped wearing the the tattoos to the airport. And- oh, yeah, answer the first champagne. question. Okay, so yeah. the reason I normally do this because like my shoes smell so bad, so I don't want to put them in the suitcase. Like that, they're smelling up all my clothes. Like so I've done, done that pl- before. Like, what, what, done what, that. What, what, done... What the plane to smell up? Yeah, no, but just like. I've done... <laughs> 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 Bro, you're so selfish, though. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that before though, and I I get like I open my suitcase and I'm like wow my clothes reek like, <laughs> like and I'm like I'm just gonna wear. Have you ever heard of a plastic bag? You just put well, the. That's what I've started to do. Yeah. Oh, you learned eventually. Yeah, I learned. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, actually, then recently I was traveling in Champagne wearing just sandals, and I packed my tennis shoes in like a bag, and then my bags got lost. So I, <laughs> I was like, well, Dude, now I'm back. Dog, no, now I'm back. We're in champagne. He, we're in champagne. Oh. He pulls up Monday night because it was the IT outage. I don't know if you guys remember with the flights. Oh, he did? Yeah, yeah. 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 So the computers like, he, were down. Yeah, yeah. So he, his flight got delayed like two, a day and a half or something. And so he shows up t- to our room with only his diadem duffel. No rackets, no no shoes, no string, no nothing. And and we're playing dubs the next day, and we had to go buy shoes. We we went to a store and bought shoes for him. He played oh, no. he played a match with my racket. No way. Who's you guys play? My, uh, I played Andre Illigan and Oscar. 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 Okay. How'd you guys do? We won. won four and four. You won with PK's racket. Wow. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. But no, I was like trying to like make subtle like subtle hints to PK to like maybe you should like try to get in their head like let them know kind of I'm using the Yonix racket. But like PK was too nice of a guy and like they didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's like, because the next day I'm practicing with Oscar and mm. Noah's on the court right next to us with a Babala arrow. And his normal shoes, and Oscar did not notice at all. Like, him at all. Yeah. And Noah was like, "Dude, you gotta tell him, man. You have to tell him. You gotta let him know." I think <laughs> <laughs> just won't do it. it with, with your racket, and I was like, "Nah, dude, that's too me, man." Which uh, is very funny. Is that the only time your bag got lost? Yeah, I spent like six days in Tunisia without my bag, without my suitcase, and then I got it back maybe the night before main draw, and then I still lost. But like, would you believe that? I was on a Copa Airlines flight, 
I walk to the front to go on the plane with my bike. They tell me, I can't take it on. It's too big. So they say, they got to put it on under the plane. I get in the plane. I got a window seat, right? Play music, look out the window. I see the our plane is going backwards, and my tennis bag is on the ground outside. <laughs> <laughs> my, my tennis bag is on the ground outside as we, as we are back and back. Where were you guys? Where were you going? I was leaving Cancun to go home for the week to go to Panama. In twenty, oh, I remember. Okay, in twenty nineteen. Okay, whatever. And then, and then my bag got lost a week later. That's why I use your rackets. Exactly, at but I was so upset. I was I so upset. Be, I would be fuming. within forty feet of walking. Yeah. My bag didn't make it on the plane. But it's on the ground. Like, it's there. Like a they have it. A guy was holding it. <laughs> a guy was holding it, and I'm looking out the window. I say, I know it's on my bag. I know that's not my bag. <laughs> I get home. That was my bag. No rackets. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> too good. Yeah, that still pisses me off. Actually, <laughs> talk about things that um, piss you off. There was a, a Chile story, Concepcion, oh. like a sign in, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Yeah, from the top, just from the top. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, I'm traveling actually with PK. We're in Santa Cruz. I saw you there. Yeah. Um, everything was fine. You know, played two weeks there. Traveling to Chile for another future. Yeah, but you uh, forgot we were in the gym too. And I, we were in the gym, and I, I we were talking about like, does he have to sign in or not? Oh yeah. So basically, I'm like one in qualies, and there's like five available slots plus two specials. So I'm like, I'm definitely in. <laughs> I'm definitely in. Mate. I couldn't be more in. Like yeah, I couldn't be more in. Okay, and um, I like don't really and. Of course, now they've changed the rule where you don't have to sign in for qualities anymore. But this is last year, so you have to sign in. And we're traveling, and like I don't know, like the geography, I guess, but like Bolivia is like <laughs> literally like east of Chile, like so. Like we we fly to Chile, and like I think I still have time to, to sign in, and like somehow the time changed. I was like, I but it went it, hour four. Though. It went hour four. Like, make it make sense. Like, we went left in the hour, and the time changed. Like, we went west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, like, I text the supervisor like eighteen minutes after the signing close. And, he remembers eighteen minutes. Yeah, eighteen minutes exactly. And I'm like, hey, like, you know, I'm Noah Schachter. Like, I'm signing in. Like, and he goes, sorry, like, you can't play. I was like, oh, hey, Bo, can I play Maine? No, like, you like can't let you play sorry you missed the deadline and i'm like dude like i was literally like so far in maine that it was like <laughs> <laughs> i was in the second round already dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so i was literally a dub special that week and then you hung up and said i swear to god i'm about to lose it <laughs> i'm about to lose it yeah uh, but he actually got sick that week anyway so it actually kind of worked out yeah but Still, it was, a, it was hilarious. Dude. He he was telling everybody in the tournament, dude. You told me so, the first day I pulled up. He was so mad, dude. <laughs> he, he was like, man, like when I go pick he up, said, my... he said it's too good. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, man, if when I pick up my check, I'm not even gonna look him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> That'll show him. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, Fika, go get my check, man. Oh That's my conception, bro! What a place. All right, let's talk. Let's talk about Anam a little bit. So, PK, let's start with you, I guess. When you were leaving A and M, what kind of memories or legacy, I guess, of yourself did you want to leave behind uh, on the team? Is uh, that something you thought about at all? And same for you, no, I guess. I think our team was very focused on being like good teammates, despite all the stories we told you guys. Um, uh, no, it was it was great, man. Like we we had so much fun, so much fun. Uh, a lot of great things happened. Um, tennis, non tennis. For me, school was important I, I i value that degree a lot um and i value, study? uh computer science I mean, um, damn and so it was it was a tough degree with the tennis and everything i i wasn't sleeping that much um who needs to sleep bro yeah. Look, my my uh my roommates in college also on the team did community computer science and business informatics and he also did not sleep yeah, yeah i was up like until 3 a.m well it was so funny because like it would be like especially after when Shaq and I moved in together. It would be like me and Guido, another teammate of ours. He was studying finance. I was studying computer science. So we'd be studying all the time to like 1, 2 a.m., whatever. And then him, 
<laughs> be no one Barney playing FIFA until like one or two AM. So it, it would just be so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> like no one would come into my room. Like I used to have like this jar of peanuts because like whenever I get hungry, he'd just be eating it like on his phone, TikTok full volume. And I'm, I'm like coding some Good stuff team, and I'm losing, I'm losing it, dude. Yeah. Like actually losing it. Like, dude, you have to get out of here, dude. And he's like, oh, dude, relax, man. It's okay. Like, I'm like, dude, I have an assignment, dude. I can't find the error, dude. I don't know where it is. <laughs> it looks correct. It looks correct, but it's red everywhere. Um, so like it was funny that we had that dynamic too in our room but but as far as your question about legacy i i really wanted to be a good teammate because i my i was kind of like not the best player especially when i got there i was like i was a red shirt walk on um and then was very just very grateful to be there to be honest um i was probably gonna go maybe d2 maybe d3 that was my my options at the time and then I uh, got very lucky with Kevin and Steve. Kind of threw me a bone a little bit, and and the school was great. So I was like, "This is just something I can't pass up." And then, uh, but we had great teams. It was it was a lot of fun. So much yeah. fun. So. You know, um, Kevin and Steve always said like to leave the place better than than when you came. Uh, they have stressed that a lot. So I feel like everyone tried to be a great teammate and like try to recruit as best we could, try to make the program better. Um, and that for me, I guess, yeah, I would just, I always try to be a, a great teammate and try to help guys out and try not to be selfish. And like, if I see someone struggling, try to help them with their game. Um, Cause at the end of the day, like college tennis is a team sport. Like you want, it's an individual, but like sport, but you're trying to have your team win. So like, yeah. I tried to always help guys out with stuff that I saw of, uh, yeah, but I would say everyone at A and M, I feel like, tried their best to be a good teammate. Okay, and I think it, you can see it on the tour right now. Like, obviously, we play together a lot. He was playing with Trey a lot. I played with like Pierce and multiple guys like that are yeah. Aggies. Like, he's played with Harrison before. Like, I think it's like a thing that like if you see like someone that's from A and M, yeah, like, sure, Robin Nash. Yeah, like all everybody, like yeah. even like Val's like still talk to him still talk to Hadi like we all keep in touch Hadi is doing well too. um yeah so like it's just so many guys that are doing well but also like it's a good group like our group chat is still alive like oh, really? every every lucky like, you couple, every, <laughs> <laughs> every week someone's throwing in some random funny moment or like a oh, random yeah. meme and stuff so it's, it's a great what was it like the the training sessions and practice I heard it got a little heated. physical physical yeah I mean super competitive uh and like there was no messing around like we uh there's no messing around well to some like, extent like yeah <laughs> i mean like i heard the, a lot of stories depends, of some messing around depends like, who you are. no yeah. funny stuff depends <laughs> like, off the court yes but on the court i feel like everyone was like super locked in and we knew we had a super good team good morals ethics or were people cheating no uh people were definitely uh Hooking, trying to win, trying yeah. to win. Hook give this one practice. Yeah, like just what? <laughs> we, had, we, had, we had guys, we had guys changing the scores, the practice sets, and reporting at the coaches. Like, wow, <laughs> like, crazy stuff. Like, we'd be at dinner and be like, dude, like, why did, why did Kevin just say that I lost six three? <laughs> I won six two. Like, stuff like that. Um, the, you definitely take some of those ways with you now. Like you, like I don't know if you remember this. Last week you were pressing with Harry in uh in bogota and you were doing the normal shit you know you're doing like uh you know you were like you would like you would like, you'd hit like a chip return and you came in you won the point you look at me you're like you know, you're doing this one? and harry's seeing all of it out the corner of his eye and then at dinner he was like no it's fucking pissing me off today. <laughs> there's one story too like uh he he was doing i remember it was like we used to do these like in like team tournaments whatever so like we would always have like the stuff we should get were prizes for like winning practices or whatever so it's like one time we were playing like an actual tournament like two all like two all sets like two out of three and like me and him are practicing next to like it was like uh, val and bjorn i don't know what round they were playing in and all of a sudden like val and bjorn are like playing points and he starts grunting for them mm-hmm. so like <laughs> They lost it, bro. So when I was like hitting the ball, he goes, eh. and then Bjorn he gives a different one. He's like, oh, yeah. and like uh, they both lost it at him, and he and like it was so funny though. Like he was trying to get in their head, like he, he wasn't. <laughs> <in the dark. laughs> bro, um, talk to me about. You told me that there was a lot of uh, 
trying to see who is the alpha dog or alpha man on the team. You have any stories about that? Yeah, so <laughs> our team like was obsessed and like like I don't know, we'd always be like who's an alpha, who's a beta, especially if we played play doubles like 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 I'm taking the deuce point, like I'm alpha, <laughs> like, I'm, then, like um, I'm serving first. Yeah, stuff like that. Um so yeah, we went to a fall tournament once and I don't know why I thought it would be funny if I like wore a daddy hat, like literally a shirt that said daddy on it. Um show up in the van on the, to the to, <laughs> We're at LSU to the courts, and Kevin, our coach, is looking at us like, "Wait, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> you look like an idiot. Like, uh, like you better win. Like, like you look." <laughs> so the hat just reads "Daddy." On yeah, the, yeah. So okay. I, I can't wear it during the match, but I'm literally like walk onto the court wearing a daddy hat, take it off, playing a guy from Arkansas, lose the first set six zero. Quick, yeah, quick. Kevin's like real alpha of you. <laughs> but like he's your daddy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, you better gift him that hat after the <laughs> um, He won, though. Came back and won. Yeah. Came back and won. Yeah, but he never let me wear that hat again. No, uh, I don't blame yeah. him much at all. Yeah. <laughs> Any other stories? Any other stories? Um, yeah, no, we, we just had so many crazy, funny, like, unreal moments as a team. There was one, like, that happened at our apartment. So it's like, again, it's me, Noah, Guido, and Barney. So, like, every Sunday, usually, like, whenever we'd have time, we'd usually all go to dinner because, like, it would be me and Guido studying and him and Barty just doing whatever. I don't even know. And uh, and then, like, we would always go out to eat on Sunday night. But then this time, it was only me and Barney. And it's, like, we, we would go to, like, Blaze or Torchies usually every, every Sunday. And then this time, we went to Blaze. We got two pizzas. when Back when you could get two pizzas for, like, 15 bucks, it was an unreal deal. Yo, college was a joke with that stuff. Like so, Jimmy John's, Blaze, all these and places like all had the, like all the student discounts and stuff. It was unreal. unreal, yeah. And so like we go and we save the second pizza for lunch or whenever we need it because obviously in college like you're on the go all the time. There's mm-hmm. no time to like sit down and stuff. And so like Barney brings home a pizza, I bring over pizza, and he had like some crazy day or something. So like we had fitness at two, and he comes back to the park at like one thirty, and he has to like wolf down a pizza. So he comes back and I just finished eating mine. And so it no one wasn't in <laughs> no one wasn't there, but it was me, Barney, and Guido. Guido's in his room studying or whatever. Barney goes to the fridge, gets the pizza, shakes it, nothing's in there. <laughs> so he can like but he he doesn't believe it, right? So like he whips it out and then opens it. He looks in there, not, nothing is there. Just a like, little crust. Just a little, like one piece of crust. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows it's not me because I'm vegetarian. So like, so like, first thing he does is he he gets so mad. Obviously, he has like 30 minutes, and we're about to do the like very tough fitness. So he, he sprints in Guido's room, and Guido's like kind of smiling because he knows what. To- <laughs> <laughs> and, and he goes, "Yo, Guido, like what the, what like what the hell? Like, what, did you eat my pizza?" And Guido, like, instead of saying like, "Hey, sorry, Lou, my bad," like I was really hungry, he goes, "No, I I, I thought it was Noah's, dude." Like. Like, as if that was okay. Like, yeah, that makes it better. Noah's, and Barney lost it. Like, it was so funny. And Green was like, I swear, I thought it was Noah's. Dude, like, kept trying, <laughs> trying to play that angle for no reason. Um, and, like, we used to have a lot of those. Like, I remember I used to have, like, I used to get these, like, veggie burgers because obviously I need protein and stuff. And, like, everyone would rip me for them because obviously, like, make fun of the vegetarian, huh? And, uh, <laughs> you would have hated me, dog. <laughs> But then all of a sudden, like every night out, everyone would come back and start Kill eating burger, all of yeah. them. And like our fridge was very communal, I can tell you that. Like anything that was in there, like you put in there, you're you're at risk of losing it for sure. Mm. It was funny. How did how did your religion impact your college experience? Uh it was fine, man. No problems ever. Like uh our team was very diverse, which is very, very cool. We had guys from all over the world. Um and so, like, we would always different get... Different IQs, different... Different everything, right? <laughs> <laughs> you tried to slide on in there. Um, no, we had different everything. Like, we'd have, like... And so, like, like we'd have guys... Like, Guido would be another one where he'd start instigating stuff. So he'd be, like... He'd go up to, like, I don't know, Pierce or Kenner, that very Christian, and be like, oh, I guess PK's religion is wrong, huh? And he'd start, like... Okay, just start, like, fights poke, like yeah. that. Um, but we, we always had, actually, like... Why I think about it, we had very open discussions. It was pretty cool, actually, like... But you never, you never felt excluded from anything? No. That's good. Cool. No, that was great. That was cool. Yeah. Talk about instigating, too. Like, our team was, like, ruthless in the sense. Like, we would go to, like, restaurants and, like, or takeout places. And, like, 
you know, you're supposed to give a name for an order and stuff. And like people were given names of <laughs> opponents that our teammates had just lost to. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you see, like, you see, like, like Val lost to like whoever Duarte and someone like how do you be like, oh, my name's Duarte. Yeah, and they're calling out like, <laughs> like, 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 you know, like people are calling like, like. Job, Paul Job. <laughs> Someone just lost him. Like, you know, we're naming guys out. No. Oh, yeah. Nuno. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> Bro, can we tell the story with Guido or no? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Yo, there's so many stories from, from this AM team that I, I wish we could tell, but oh my god. Too good. Should we should we run a game or what? Yeah, let's run the game. Let's run oh, the game. Man. So we're gonna go first guy to three points, which might be tough. But if we have a tie at the end of the questions, we just have a tiebreaker. First guy to answer it wins. Shout the answer out. But if you shout out the wrong answer, they can all give an answer before you can um before you can guess again. Okay. Like if we have too many wrong guesses, we'll just move to the next question. Wait, so is everyone, you're playing too, or what is yeah, it? You three. Oh, I'm playing. Oh, okay, okay. I've never He's won. never won. So if one of you guys don't, if one of you, one of you guys don't win, then. I've literally never won. Like, I've lost every single time. I, I need to be the I first loser. Tennis trivia? What is it? It's a mix. Every loss is one closer to a win. He's actually really good at this stuff. We'll see. Not to put pressure on him. But... What, women's tennis? All right. <laughs> let's go. Uh, who won the gold medal in women's tennis singles? Zhang. PK. Wang. One zero. <laughs> <laughs> One for PK. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, but I just didn't say it fast enough. Okay, this one is uh, who said this. So I'm going to start reading out a quote, and you can stop me at any time. Okay. And you can tell me who said it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who said this after a loss against Alcaraz? Man, this one hurt. I ain't going to lie, but I'm on my Brazil. way back. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty easy. I ain't gonna lie, give it away. <laughs> no one else talks like that. <laughs> Can I finish the quote? Yeah, go on, finish it. But I'm on my way back. I'm more motivated than ever to build on this. And he spelled then, than as T H E N. I hate when I see that. Motivated than ever makes no sense. Jordy probably wrote that. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. So we got PK1, Jody1, no zero. It's like a tough bro. He's, really, he's, really, he's really good at this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I thought so. It's like the dumbest partner right there. <laughs> what is the capital of Peru? Lima? Lima. Oh, God. Jody's about to win. Oh, my. Jody's oh got two. My. Come on. Come on. This is the day. What is the square root of 25 plus 10? 15. Noah back in the game. <laughs> Let's go. Who is the highest ranked Australian tennis player right now in the men's side? Ooh, two, two. Wow. Two, two, my brother. Wait. I'm not sure she said. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You might have to get that out. <laughs> no, 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 no. That stays for sure. All right, come on. Two, two, one. Who is the highest ranked Frenchman right now? Fields. You can't talk. Uh... This is your chance to win, Jody. Bro, this is your chance, bro. Pericard? <laughs> no, oh. dog. Uh, I'm going to guess Mute, but it's wrong. It's wrong. You can, you can all guess again. More face? You just screwed it. You're done. Come on, though. Umber. BK is the winner of the of this game. It's a, it's a low key player too. <laughs> 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 Guys, this was a lot of fun. Oh, hold, on, um, hold, on, hold on, let's get in some Instagram question. This is from first one is from Belen uh, to Noah, I guess. What are your thoughts on relationships while traveling all the time for tournaments? I think relationships on the road are are healthy. Uh, Gives you someone to talk to. I kind of have that that same routine. <laughs> um, I talk. I mean, Belen is my girlfriend. I talk to her often. Uh, I feel like it helps me kind of relax before matches at night. Kind of like 
probably helps distract you. Too, yeah, from, distract from me from the stress. Yeah, so I think it's I think it's healthy. Often is an understatement. <laughs> What do you they mean? talk it all the time, which is good. I think it's good. Do you guys good. schedule calls? No, just like when we wake up, uh, middle first of the thing day. in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Right out cool. the shower, dude. But then he loves you. He does. He does love. He does a lot. First thing in the morning, bro. That's good. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> you don't want to lose that one. Yeah. Jeez. Good. <laughs> all right. Next question is from Louis. Um, Pete. This is for PK. PK, what's your worst river? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but do you guys know what river means? Like, no. It, river, like, we, we use it, like, I got this from Trey. Like, it's a poker term. The river is the last card of poker. Okay. So, like, you can be winning the hand until the last card is the river card. And then kind of, you feel like, oh, and then if you lose the hand, it's like, oh, I got a river. So, yeah. then we use it as a tennis term, meaning, like, uh, kind of unlucky, like, like like an unlucky point in doubles, like you could you could have said like the four one point today was kind of a river where like I, like you had a volley on top of that kind yeah. of and like PK guessed right and like reflexed it back. Okay. Yeah. Um, to answer Louis's question, shout out Louis. Um, but I think it was the last couple of weeks. It was in Dallas where I played with Axel and he was hurt. He said he had a blister on his foot and he couldn't move, and that was a river. And then the week after, I mean, he said, "Did he have or he didn't have?" He said he had a blister. I wasn't checking his you foot. Didn't believe no, I, I wasn't not, looking at his foot, no, being I did, like, "I." I did see it. He was yeah, staying with it. No, he, yeah. he was staying with us um, for sure. And then I played with Adam Neff next week, one of my best friends, and he had just won Dallas he, the week he before. Himself, yeah. So like he he wasn't he couldn't move in those and like so <laughs> at one point they figured out that they could just bunt across and, and they'd be fine. And we were playing a good team. And then the week after, he came with no bags, no rackets. Still got no shoes. Still, still got, still the got a, what do you call it, three? Nightmare three. Nightmare three. Nightmare three. <laughs> Nightmare three. I, we argue, but zeros are better than three sometimes, man. Yeah, I think. You just, you're just saying nonsense now. PK told me in Michigan, he was asking me, do you think three is worse than zero? And I was like, PK, what are you talking about, bro? I would much rather take three than take zero. It's just the points, The points, yes, but more like... Like for your spirit, it's worse, dude. But then you rather you, go, you rather travel somewhere and win zero matches than win one, bro. He said this to me, and I was like, "Pika, what are you talking about? It's way better to get three than zero. And then, I got zero. And then he got zero, and he's like, "I did it to myself." <laughs> <laughs> so he told me, he's like, "I wish it upon myself." Um, but yeah, I'd say the last couple of weeks, I've had, we've had a lot though. It's it's pretty funny, like when we go back. But I gotta we say, manifest it though. He's one of those guys that at first I was thinking, Jody, like, why is the guy always talking to me? But like, I don't know him. You know, but you, but you're like you're super nice, and I'm I'm the opposite. Like I'm like don't sign yourself short. I'm stand I'm standoffish. <laughs> I don't know you. Like I'm a little bit uncomfortable by the like you were asking about my injuries and stuff, and like you were very concerned. And I was like, why does he care so much? Like he doesn't really know me. He was like, PK cool dog. And then I feel like this week because because I know you much more after having dinner and stuff with you. And yeah, I think I did the same thing to Josh. She also a big guy. I don't know why. Wait, well, I met you in Saddleburg, right? And then we we met a long time. Yeah, like juniors. You were at, you were still in high school, I think. Yeah. and I was at USF. Yeah, but you were training at Saddleburg. Yeah, but I was hurt. And well, I was we, you should tell the story about when we roomed together in Cancun while we were staying to each other all week. I feel like it helped you, like that week. Uh he was reading. You reading a book? Yeah, I was oh, reading the read book, book called Slight Edge, and the like Slight and Edge. we were like going back and forth, like whenever I would leave the gym, um, or he would leave the gym or whatever. Uh, he would ask me like, "Yo, what were you doing?" I said, don't, 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 don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah. Do a, a, a lift session, and he would be like, "I was just in the gym, but but don't worry about it. Don't yeah. worry about it. Sleep. It's okay. Take 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 take, take, take a nap. nap. Take <laughs> a nap. Relax, bro. Don't worry, bro. Let's, I'm just out here getting better. Don't worry about it." Yeah. But that was all week. And that, was, that was fun. That Noah was fun. loves those ones. Noah yeah. told me in practice this week. He's like, "Wow." It's, crazy you can hit that ball with that backswing <laughs> <laughs> no, that's too good all right uh next question for noah what does it mean to have the it factor this is from austin austin uh a brat yes that's funny. Uh, team, <laughs> yeah it means uh we used to joke about it too having the it factor it means i guess just like Having it, I don't know, like, like being, clutch, just, being, yeah, being very clutch. Being you clutch. it, like you, you produce the best stuff when it matters the most. You, you come up with the goods. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> All right, this is the last one. This is going to be a little bit of a topic. Uh, also, but... how come you never asked me about the relationship question, huh? Because I figured that's this was cold. directed. That's cold. That's really cold. Cool. First of all, I don't know why I asked Noah any questions at all because he didn't even share the story. You know? That is true. With that's that. crazy. Oh, that which one? True. That's crazy work. <laughs> that's crazy work. <laughs> he told, you know what he the told me? You know the what story he, on Instagram. You know, oh. what he, you know what he told me? was like after he, he oh. brought it up and making fun of him, he goes, dude, I actually feel kind of bad, dude. <laughs> 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 Man, so we you, spent dinner with him and stuff. And you ignored it. Of course he saw yeah, it. He no, saw I, it. I, I, we followed each other back. And then, like, PK storied it. And I was like, oh, like, oh, it's like when the podcast releases, I'll, like, I'll share mine, you know? <laughs> if I feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> if it's good for my image. <laughs> Don't worry about it. That's too good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. All right. Here's the last one. This is, I guess, for the room from Sebastian. Um, it says rank these attributes for ground strokes, but we can just discuss it's. Pace, depth, spin, height, accuracy, consistency. It's a lot of things to rank. It's oh. a lot. It's a lot. Two years out of school for us. What? Two years out of school for us. Yeah, that's <laughs> Wait, what are we ranking? Whose strokes are we ranking? Or what are Just we- the importance of it. Oh. Speed, depth, spin, height, accuracy, consistency. I feel like a little bit of that is redundant. Like accuracy and you talk about depth. Accuracy, uh, yeah. But also depends on the ball. Like... Depth, for example, like if you're open in the court, maybe you want to go angle, so it's better to go a little bit shorter. If you're close in the court, maybe you want to go deep and to the middle. I feel like accuracy should be one, no? Yes. Accuracy and depth. I think consistency. <laughs> Just well, not missing is actually one because yeah. you have a chance. Yeah. But if you're very accurate, you won't miss. Yeah. I feel like he could, like, I don't know, do something. I was thinking accuracy with consistency and depth. Yeah, I feel like they one. kind of mesh yeah but you need all of it to have a good shot <laughs> to have a good shot like, <laughs> you just gotta be good <laughs> we can we can just but i will say merge that some of I, them into ball quality so let's go ball quality consistency and what yeah i guess that's it ball like ball. if if i could pair accuracy with like let's say time taken away i don't have to hit the ball as hard i would say that's probably one like being able to put the ball exactly where you want to but being able to do it fast, not because you're hitting the ball hard necessarily, but because the ball doesn't have that much time after it bounces and they get back to the opponent. So I would say in that sense, probably accuracy is one. And then ball quality will come after. But at a certain level, hit the ball as, as close to the line as you want. But if you don't have good quality, you're probably going to get hurt anyway. So but if I had to pick, I probably would pick accuracy. I think it probably also depends on the stage of tennis that you are, like the ability that you have, you know, like what you said, if you're just tapping the ball in at the high levels, it's not going to work. And if you're at the lower level, if you're just consistent, you'll win more matches. So it just depends on, on your goals and where you want to be. But ultimately, you want to strive for a good quality ball and hitting it into a good location um, at the right time. So that's pretty you'll much figure it. figure it out, man. Yep. But um, yeah, fellas, thanks for joining us today. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, no one's sweating. Or no no. shadow. No, that's no, just the I'm Sophie. Just, I'm sweating. That's the Sophie Bella way. You know, yeah. clean. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> His sponsor. His sponsor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, yo, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Can I say it's one thing nice. before you guys wrap up? You can. It's gonna be nice. Yes. Uh, it's a little scenty, so okay. don't cry. I want to shout out him a lot. Um. And Josh too, two guys I would say, and Adam three guys I would say. But like anyone else, you just kidding. The refs, <laughs> <laughs> the supervisor here. <laughs> no, I, I especially him because I remember last year around this time, I just kind of started playing, and I was trying to you know, especially like a guy like maybe I could focus on singles too, but like I I really believe in myself in doubles I would say. Um so obviously you have to find someone that works with you and people that you know. And obviously he was playing with Trey and he kind of they obviously went on different like Trey wanted to focus on more doubles so he wanted to play more higher level events and Noah wanted to play more fifteens and twenty fives and stuff like that. And being that I don't know if it's true if I, if I was one of his first calls, but I really always appreciated that from him just because what we we're talking about on the way here, just because you know, I was like, whatever, 12, 1500, whatever. And I think that just shows like 
again, like a very strong sense of loyalty for me. And, and then like guys like Josh too, that like, you know, when I was lower ranked, were like, Hey, like come play a week with me here. Come play a week with, obviously when you weren't playing with him, he was like, I was always kind of his first, first yeah. call. Um, so I really want to shout out those guys and like you guys too, like just all the guys on the tour that have been so nice to me, you guys, especially like this week has been great so far. Um, and I'm sure next week will be great as well. Just like going to dinners and like seeing you guys on the, on the tournament side mm -hmm. and just being nice and stuff. So, And I would say with a great guy from him, but uh, today you hit a volley. I think it was one zero in a tie break. You were up. I think Jordy was back and Ben Locke was tight to the net. It was a river. And you put the ball, <laughs> was a river. the only spot that no one could get to it. Like you put it oh, short that's... enough that Jody couldn't get to it. It was like and, a drop volley. And just down deep the line, enough yeah. that it was behind Ben Lock. I said, This guy has volley. Like it was like a low volley below the net and he cut it straight. Like he hit a drop volley straight over the higher parts of the net. Well, the only, I said, this, the guy only volleys, reason... this guy has volleys from God, bro. I said, What is that? <laughs> well, because he hit a he hit like a tricky return where like both of them were like because it was like high in the air, so like they mm -hmm. both did it. Obviously one figure out in the moment, especially in altitude. And so, like, yeah, it was, I don't know. I just hit it there. Just saw it. Yeah. It's crazy, bro. It's factor. Like, that's what it is. <laughs> it factor. And that's he where said, we end the podcast. Yeah, you bro. said river and you said it factor, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, bro. Um, but, yeah, fellas, thank you for real. Hope you guys hope you guys enjoyed it. Good, Good luck tomorrow in the tomorrow. finals. Thank Let's you, go thank get you. it. Um, yeah, everyone, thanks for watching. Don't forget we have merch in the store. We have uh, the Venmo link. Yeah, we'll have the link below if you want to help pitch in for, for editing costs. That'll help us uh, a lot. Um, and then also, if you want to buy a pro stringer, we can get you, save you some money. Save $100 if you use the code changeover when purchasing the pro string on their website. So thanks for watching. See you guys like, next. Like, comment, subscribe, share. All oh, yeah. Also, we're trying to get to 2,000 subs as soon as we can. So if you thought this was interesting, hit the sub button and send it to people that you think would enjoy enjoy our content but um yeah thanks for watching see you in the next episode